Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Orsi, the Toronto Website Developer. And in this video tutorial, I want to introduce you to carriage return line feeds, CRLF uh, injections. Uh, essentially, they're vulnerabilities that allow you to manipulate headers um, from a, a server that are being returned to you. Uh, and you can typically uh, exploit the location tag in there. You can set your own cookie. Sometimes you can uh, execute uh, JavaScript as well. So before we do that, um, and I should say I learned about this while I was researching uh, How to Become a White Hat Hacker, a book where I am breaking down public disclosures on vulnerabilities uh, to help explain what they are and how you can start getting into the bug bounty programs um, by submitting vulnerabilities yourself. So you can find that at leanpub.com slash whitehathacking and I largely rely on the reports from HackerOne which are publicly disclosed as well as some other vulnerability reports that I come across um, via Twitter and and what have you. So that said, uh, just before we get started, you'll notice I'm at dailylearners.com. This is a new website. I'm a lead developer here. Um, we just released our pre-beta where we're testing out the site ourselves, uh, but beta should be launching soon. Here, what you can do, the idea is, is you're learning something new. You come in, you create a lesson, you teach yourself in your own words, uh, and we're going to make it 500 characters or less, so you really have to boil it down. Um, but you can also learn with others and quiz yourself at any time. So if you're interested, uh, come on over, sign up, and we'll notify you when beta is open. Lastly, burp suite, uh, portswagger.net slash burp. Uh, this is a tool I'm going to be using in the video tutorial. You're going to want to get this if you're going to be doing any type of white hat hacking. Uh, it's invaluable. So you'll see me using it here. Maybe in the future I'll have a video tutorial on how you can actually use it yourself. Now, I'm over at Shopify Partners. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually log into one of my development stores. And when I do that, you're going to see how we can manipulate a cookie. Um, I can't, we can't actually inject and do the CRLF. Uh, what I want to do is show you what to look for uh, and then how you would manipulate that. So um, the reason why I'm doing this with Shopify is because part of their public disclosures or rather private disclosures uh, and vulnerability reports is don't disclose vulnerabilities about harmless cookies. So they have a harmless cookie which sets your last store, uh, which you can actually play with the store name, but you can't modify or, or do any relocation or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to show you um, and this is how we do it. So um, you'll notice here I've gone ahead and I'm using, oh man, so much crap that goes on in the background. Um, using Burp Suite and I've set up my proxy. So using Firefox, real easy to set up a proxy. So all my traffic is going through here and I'm going to pick it up. So I'm going to turn on my intercept and now what I'm going to do is just click on my store. So now you'll see that I'm just sitting here loading and I can see all of the requests going back and forth. And so we're looking for a specific one called b.shopify.com, which is going to set the, the last store. So I'm just going to forward these that are going to my store. It should be about four or so, I think. Uh, depends what you've been doing recently. Okay, so here we look, we got v.shopify.com, uh, but this is going to uh, admin slash identify. We don't care about that one. Here we get a get request that's going to last shop, question mark, shop equals, and then uh, the name of my shop. And so if we look at the parameters here, uh, sorry, not the parameters, we want the, is it the header? Yes. So if we, we go back here, I'm saying parameters, you'll see that there's a URL here, and then there's the shop name, and then the actual value. And so that's what we saw here in the raw. It's the uh, this piece right here. So in the parameters, um, what we look for in CRLF is anything that you're inputting uh, or potentially have control over that is then going to be used in setting a cookie. So um, what I'll do is I'll let this go through and then we'll come back and we'll actually modify it. So if I forward this, I'm gonna forward all of this. Yes, 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 oh, I wanna do, it doesn't matter, okay. now. We forwarded all that. Uh, Burp Suite allows us to look at our history. So let's go look at what our history looked like. Uh, so we're looking for v.shopify. There's so much crap in here. Um, here it is, v.shopify.com, last shop, shop is equal to, and then my store name. And if we look at the response that came back, we see we're setting a cookie where the last shop is equal to the value from the URL, whatever was submitted. So that is a key indicator where there's something going in that we potentially could manipulate, which will set a cookie. So that's where you're going to look for a carriage return line feed. Essentially what that is, is it's percent zero D, no, percent zero A, percent zero A, percent zero D. And so that stands for actually a carriage return line feed. And what it means is an actual kind of line break that gets set. And so if you're able to actually inject those characters, you can then go ahead and set a content type, you can set a cookie, sometimes you can set the location, you can start manipulating a whole bunch of stuff. Um, 
even if you can't inject those characters, if this is setting a cookie and you're able to actually manipulate this URL, like if I could enter in my own URL for this, then um, I could potentially redirect somebody to that. So that's where this becomes a vulnerability. That's where it becomes exploitable. There's a couple um, examples in my book where people have used this to uh, do cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, one specifically on Twitter, which was really interesting. Um, so that said, let's go back, let's intercept and take a look at what we can actually do with this. So the intercept's on, so I'm just going to turn that off while we do this. So here, let's turn it back on, and let's get that request again. So click here, go back to the intercept, and we don't care about this guy, or that guy, or this guy, or that guy, or this guy, or that guy, or this guy. But, okay, so we're getting to vShopify, we don't care about admin. We don't care about page. We care about last shop. So last shop. So I've gone ahead and I played with this a ton. Um, you can go ahead and try and play with it too. See if you can actually come up with something and then report it and get the money from Shopify. But I can't seem to. Uh, it doesn't. It it validates that the ending here is myshopify.com. But you can set this to anything that you want. So this could be test store. Um, and so I'm going to forward that with the new value. And we'll go ahead and I'm going to actually. Do not intercept Facebook. I don't care. Um, but notice all these Facebook. This is all crap that goes on behind the scenes. Um, so use this to find out what your browser is actually doing. So now if we go into my uh, my history, we go down. Let's go find that v.shopify. Here we go. Last shop. You'll see it actually set my cookie to last store, which is kind of cool. Now, I can't remember where I actually show you this, but I think if we if we log out here, let's make sure we're intercepting. So the intercept is on, that's good. Um, let's log out. Let's let this, okay, so just make sure we don't modify it again. So there's Shopify, Shopify, Shopify. V.Shopify, so you can see here, the request is going to V.Shopify and it's actually submitting the cookie that we submitted where our last shop is actually equal to teststore.myshopify.com. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so we can keep forwarding this. this. is all good. This is a bunch of crap. I think we're, we're in the clear now. We'll turn off this guy. Let's go and let's log in. And you'll see that it read my cookie in and it took my last store to be teststore.myshopify.com. Um, so again, this is harmless. It doesn't do anything. Um, but this is a way that you can look for the character turn line feed um, and actually start injecting stuff. Um, so yeah. Anytime that you have control over an input that's going in um, and then something's happening in the headers with it, pretty much a set cookie, maybe a location, uh, that's a cue for you to start trying to manipulate that, uh, do some header injections. And again, the carriage return line feed percent zero, what did I say, percent zero A, percent zero D actually sets the line break. And then you can start setting your own headers, which creates the vulnerability. So that's it for this video tutorial. Hopefully it helped you. Uh, if it did, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. Thanks very much for watching.